Hello there. Welcome to Newton's Second Law. But before we talk about Newton's Second Law, it's important for you to understand that all three Newton's Law are a continuation of each other. So you need to get those ideas and the link connected properly so that you know how to physics, all right? So the whole focus of this chapter, the dynamics chapter, is to be able to use Newton's second law, third law, first law, to explain why. Why is the object moving like that? Why? So what did we, let's do a recap first. What did we learn in first law? Okay, first law says that if you have an object and it's moving at the velocity v, it will not change its motion because it has mass and it has inertia. So Newton's first law say that an object will not change how it's moving unless you do what? Uh, you go poke it. Okay. So the whole spiel here is that this will not change. Velocity will not change, which is motion will not change unless there is external force applied, specifically external net force, la. net force applied. Okay. And the next thing here is if there's external net force, then if you think about your kinematics, it means that there is acceleration. So Newton's first law is here. We, the motion or velocity will not change. Okay, this is your Newton's first law, N1. Okay, Newton's second law says that if you want to change, you got to put some external force. Okay, just like, you know, if you feel that you have certain bad habits and you want to change, you got to, maybe you get to get a friend to give you that little nudge or push. Okay, so in Newton's second law, we will focus on what happens when motion change and how much external force do we need? Ah? Okay. We'll see that after the jump. Now, before we start, I need to talk to you. I'll give you the formal, formal, formal statement about Newton's second law of motion. Uh, because science is like that one, everybody needs to define the law the same way, you know? Okay, so why is Newton's second law of motion? In an equation, it looks like this. Force, specifically net force or resultant force, is proportional to dp dt. Wait a second, teacher, why is P again? Power. No, 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 not power, not power. Although you're very powerful. P here is momentum. So it's mass times velocity. Hopefully you've watched the previous video. Okay. So writing this blue color equation, I mean, into a sentence is your Newton's second law. So we'll say something along the lines where resultant force on a body or on a mass or on an object is directly proportional to rate of change. You see the DDT here? You should be familiar by now. When you see DDT, it's about rate of change. Okay, so if you don't have maths in your arsenal as a physics student, it's a, it's a little handicap. You know, we'll try to navigate it, but whenever you see dp dt, it just means that the momentum will change. Because why? Remember, we said we want to change how an object is moving. So when we change how an object is moving, we are changing its momentum. Because when you change v, you will change p. And how quickly you change your momentum is how much force you need to apply. That's why it's directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Okay? So I, I remember best if they're in the equation. Okay? So right now, I'm just going to show you three different cases. Teacher, what could cases one? Huh? Uh, yeah, la, your FMA is one of the cases. La, okay? So the first one, okay? Let's say I want to uh, get rid of the proportionality sign. So my net force, okay, will now be equal to dp dt. But we need to insert a constant in front because if not, the proportionality will not make sense. So this would be k. Okay, so we're going to look at case number one because now p is equal to mv. So I'm going to put mv inside. So f will now be equal to k v dt bracket mv. Okay, so this is what where we are at right now. D, D, T, bracket, M, V. But the first case, 
maybe I should put this one here. Mm. First case, mass, and most of your cases will be like that. Mass constant, meaning your mass don't change. Let's say you have a trolley traveling along the road. The mass of the trolley will not change. Okay, so mass is constant. And if mass is constant, what happens in calculus is we can take out the F. All right, so right now, this F will be equal to K M bracket dv dt. Teacher, teacher, I know, I know dv dt. From the previous chapter, dv dt is what? Rate of change of velocity. dv dt is acceleration. Oh, so we can put, we can put the A in. Yes, yes. So right now, we have F is equal to K M A. And I can hear the things from you. You are telling me the teacher, the equation I use for the K is 1. Or rather, there's no K there. What's, what's what's this? Is this new equation? No, 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 no. You know, my dude, Newton, ah, my good friend, Newton, he looked at this and he goes like, hmm, there's a way to simplify this. Okay, so how does he simplify this? Let me show you. So here's a trick that Newton did, which a lot of scientists also repeatedly do, which is to use my second favorite number, one. Okay, so Newton then said, well, don't worry, we'll get rid of the K, but here's how we do it. We have F is equal to KMA. Right? So imagine that we have a 1 kg object. Okay? So I'm going to let M be equal to 1 kg and A to be equal to 1 meter per second squared. So this object is going to have an acceleration A of 1 meter per second squared. But teacher, to accelerate means we need to apply force, right? Correct, lah, because you want to change the velocity, right? You want to maybe make the block move faster or make the block start moving. So you're going to apply a force here. And then you know what Newton said? Newton said, let this, let this F be one Newton. Voila, win now, lo. Correct? And... So basically, we will let 1 Newton, 1 N, be the force needed to accelerate 1 kg by 1 meter per second squared. Oh. N. From here, I can now put F is equal to 1 Newton. So what he, did, what he did was he took his name and said, let my name be the amount of force needed to drag 1 kg, to apply to 1 kg, such that that 1 kg accelerates 1 meter per second squared. Win now, like that. win now, win now. Because then, when you put inside, you will get 1 Newton is equal to, okay, let me put here, 1 Newton is equal to K, 1 kg, 1 meter per second. So now K is equal to 1. So that's why you have the equation F is equal to MA because K is equal to 1. Okay, so K is equal to 1 is because of how Newton defined 1 Newton. This is how he defined that 1 Newton. If 1 Newton is the force required to accelerate 1 kg by 1 meter per second, then K will always be 1. Okay? That is the definition of 1 Newton. And this is how we go rid of the K and we have F is equal to MA. Caveat here, uh, this M is constant. So that's it for case 1. Now before we move on to the second case, we're going to try an example first. This is a question from May June 13, paper 1, 1 page 14 in your handouts. And here we have a car of mass 750 kg on a horizontal that has a horizontal driving force of 2 kN. Okay, so basically the car engine will drive it forwards. I'm just going to label this here. Ding, 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 ding. 2000 Newton. Okay, it has a forward horizontal acceleration. So the acceleration is horizontal. 2 meter per second squared. Okay, so the question is just what is the resistive force acting horizontally? So basically, they're very nice how they draw this one for you already. Okay, 
So whenever you see questions like this, you know that the mass is constant. We are talking about forces. The first equation that you could try to use is F is equal to MA, our good old MA. All right. So just be be be, be reminded that <laughs> not too much. Okay. This one is net force. So I am going to put a sigma in front to show that we are summing the forces. Don't just use one force. Consider all the forces. Okay, so this is net force. The second thing here is to know that F and A are always parallel. Okay, and same direction. Meaning right now, I know my net force. If let's say my A, I put positive. Right, this is positive 2 meter per second. Then this 2000, which is pointing in the same direction, must be positive. Then the resistive force that's pointing in the opposite direction here will be negative. I call this FR or resistive force. Maybe I should use a different color. I use green. So this is FR or resistive force. Make sense? So when you sum them up, okay, whenever you do this net force is MA, all force components are parallel. I'm reminding you here because uh, sometimes people will forget. Lah, okay? They got too excited. They say, wow, well, FMA, then want to use straight away. So chill, chill, chill. Make sure that all forces components are parallel. If not parallel, what to do? Ah? Uh, you don't remember? Meh? We resolve. Lah, but in this case, it's not needed. Number two, F and A must be parallel and in the same direction. Double check first. Parallel, parallel. Same direction, we give positive sign. Opposite direction, we give negative sign. Once you have done that consideration, then we can now use F equal to MA properly with confidence. 2000 minus FR. Okay. Of course, for a simple example, this one may come naturally, but you're going to level up very soon. Okay. The mass of the car is 750 kg and the acceleration of the car is 2 meter per second. So this is Q. Pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to move some things around and I can find my FR here would be 750 times 2. So 500 Newton. Okay, so this would be 0 0.50 kilo Newton written to 2 SF. All right, so this one is very straightforward because all the forces are parallel. It's on a flat horizontal surface. It's easy to see. Just a reminder, in case they are not parallel, we got to be soft, all right? Here is another example using Newton's second law, F equal to MA, but the mass is still constant. So here we have a leaf elevator consisting of a passenger car. Okay, so you have my dude here. Let's, call, let's give him a name. Let's call him Bernardo. So Bernardo is in the passenger car. Sorry, la, too many physics examples. Miss Lee is kind of bored, so she likes to name her physics. So Bernardo is in the passenger car. Okay, so supported by a cable which runs across a like frictionless pulley. Okay, great. So there's no loss in energy here. And the balancing weight. Sure. The balancing weight falls as the passenger car rises. So you can imagine this weight will travel down and then bringing Bernardo up to his uh, designated floor in the apartment. Okay, some masses are shown in the table, sure. So we have the passenger car is 520 kg, the balancing weight is 640 kg, and Bernardo, my dude, is 80 kilograms of buff muscle. What is the magnitude of acceleration? So basically, asking us to find A. What is the magnitude of acceleration of the car when carrying just Bernardo, just one passenger, and the pulley is free to rotate? Oh, okay, can. So there are a few ways to do this, but before this, normally when it's a complicated scenario like this, I have a few steps I could recommend you do if you don't know where to start. Step one, draw and label all forces that is present okay so obviously we have weight okay because they've given us so much numbers of mass right so the total mass of the passenger car plus bernardo the passenger 520 plus 80 is 600 kg so this passenger car plus bernardo bernard 
is 600 kg. So, which means there's a downward force in this direction. And this W is equal to 600 times G. Okay, so sometimes, uh, you know, W weight is equal to mg. Okay, and this G is 9.81. So, 1 kg is equivalent to 9.81 Newton. All right, so... After this, there's this balancing weight, okay? So the balancing weight is 640 kg. Okay, so I'm just going to label this one here. 640 kg. So there's a downward pulling force here. W is 640 g. Okay, is there any other forces here? Well, yes, there is. Um, there is tension, okay? So there's this tension here pulling upwards, T. So think about rope, right? Tension is always used for pulling. So the rope must pull in this direction and this 2T is the same value. So this tension in the rope is for pulling and same rope will have the same tension, same magnitude of tension. So technically speaking, they cancel out. And it says here that the acceleration they will, be, they will be accelerating, right? So just by looking at this, and it says that the passenger car rises, if there's acceleration, it will be passenger car rising. A is in this direction. But when passenger car is rising, the weight will be falling. A is in this direction. So now this looks a little bit complicated because there are too many arrows, okay? So after you draw, draw and label all F, then part two, you need to decide if, number one, are the F parallel or not. If F parallel to each other and to acceleration. In this case, it is still parallel, which is great. But there's a lot of direction to consider. Okay, number, number three, we should consider the direction of F and A. Once we consider both of these, then we can apply our good old F equal MA. Okay, so let's do so one by one. All right, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, I will do it, try to do it the simplest way possible. Okay, so I'm going to do it first for Bernardo and his passenger car. Okay, so I, when using this equation, I like to choose the direction of A as positive. This direction is positive to make my equation a little bit easier to handle. Okay, that's just how I do it. So this A, I'm going to take it as positive, meaning this tension is positive and this W is positive. So this 600G is positive. No, 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 no. Opposite direction. See, did, I, did I got you? Did I got you there? No, no, no. It's negative because in opposite direction, this W is pointing downwards. So if it's too complicated, it's always okay to drag your OneNote page to the side or find an empty space to doodle on and draw the forces acting on Bernardo and the passenger car, okay? So we have tension in this direction, T. We have Mg in this direction, 600G, and the acceleration is in this direction, A. We are looking for A. Can we form an equation? Yes, we can do net force is equal to ma all right so i can write something like net force is ma and we are taking the direction of a as positive so you positive you positive you are 600 is negative so here will be t minus 600 g is equal to ma sure um too many unknown correct lah? correct let leave it first, okay? Let it be. By the way, this uh, M uh, is 600 kg, okay? Because it's just a passenger car. Passenger car and passenger is 600 kg. Okay, I put inside here. 600 A. Okay, so you form the first equation already. Now form the second equation. Two unknown, uh, T and A is your unknown. Cannot solve. Okay, so we are done drawing the diagram of forces for 
Bernardo. But if you can see directly from here, then you don't have to draw separately. Lor. Okay, everyone's brain is different. You do what is best for you. All right, let's look at the balancing weight then. Balancing weight still got tension, okay? Same rope, same tension, same T. But the weight of the balancing weight is 640 G. You know? So I'm just drawing out this one, 640 G. Little balancing weight here, which is this one. But where is acceleration, ah, my friend? Well, as teacher, teacher, acceleration down there, correct, lor, because this is a pulley system. It goes, one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, so this is A. Aya, then this one, oh, this one is positive, correct. Right? Because the direction of A is positive. So this 640 is positive. And this tension is positive. A, 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 negative, correct. Okay, yeah. So you see here is where sometimes it gets confusing, especially if you look at certain revision books because you're like, teacher, uh, why this tension up positive? Uh, but then this tension up also negative. Uh, same same picture, same uh, what, what's going on? Because we follow the direction of acceleration, okay? Because the direction of net force would favor the direction of acceleration. So we take the direction of acceleration as positive so that your life is easier. If let's say you just want to, you know, you are a rebel rouser, you just want to change things up and then you say, teacher, I, if I take this direction negative, can I? Can. You better be consistent though. You better be consistent. This one is going to be negative. This one is going to be positive. Let's see what happens when you write this equation. You get net force is MA. I'm going to repeat this again. T minus 640G. Remember, uh, your A must have a negative A here. Which, uh, to be honest, sometimes I, myself will have anxiety of forgetting. If you take the down direction as negative, then the, the block is accelerating downward. This should be negative. Okay? So, this is what happens when you still take up as... This one, no? For this one, you're taking up as positive, down as negative. That's why I recommend taking the direction of acceleration as positive. Because if you change this, you flip the direction, you take up as negative and down as positive. Then what happens to your equation? This will be T becomes negative, right? So negative T plus 640G is equal to MA. They are the same equation, my friend. Think about it. This one, when I simplify or rather when I multiply negative both sides, 640T, 640G minus T is equal to MA. So from here, I also get 640G minus T is equal to MA. They will arrive at the same equation. It doesn't matter which direction you take as positive as long as you're consistent. So if you take upward as negative and downward as positive, then this A is positive. A here is positive because this system or rather this balancing block is accelerating downward. But this one is negative here because accelerating downward. You like, okay? As long as you're consistent and you know what you're doing. But what we want to have is to uh, end up with these two equation, Equation 1, okay? And equation 2. All right, so by the way, this is the 640G minus T is equal to 640A la. So this is my equation two. Simultaneous equation time. Two equation, two unknown. How to solve? Huh? Well, if I look at this equation oh, and I want to eliminate T because I'm looking for A, what? So I should eliminate T. You can substitute, but I prefer to just add them up. Equation one plus equation two. Okay. So I'm going to do one plus two. So equation one is T minus 600G. Let me zoom out a bit. T minus 600G plus 640G minus T. Okay, on one side. And the other side, it would be 600 plus 640. They all are accelerating together. Magnitude of acceleration is the same. Just opposite direction. Passenger car go up. 
balancing weight go down, but they move together. So they have to have the same acceleration. All right. So in this beautiful situation, my T and T is bye bye. Okay. So I have uh, 640 minus 600. I end up with 40 G is equal to 1240A. So I can substitute. Lo. A will be 40 times 9.81 divided by 1240. Let me ask my calculator, what is this? 0 0.316 meter per second squared. Okay, so if you go back to the question, to within 0 0.32. Okay, so this is the long format of doing this, right? What I did was, I look at the passenger car, form an equation, use F equal MA. Look at the balancing weight, form an equation. Being very careful about the sign. All right. So in the first case, it is pretty straightforward and normal to want to take up as positive and down as negative. Okay. So it doesn't matter which direction you take as long as you're consistent. But the second case, if you take up as positive and down as negative, remember to put negative in your acceleration or else your equation will not be this, all right? But if you're like, if you want to ignore this or if you think that it makes sense, because it makes sense to me to, to know that 640 is more than T because the block is accelerating downward. So surely the downward force is bigger. I like to take big number minus small number because I don't like negative signs. That's just me. So I'm going to take 640G as negative. I mean, as positive as this. Okay? So then this side here is ME. But you like. Okay? So there is a shortcut. Did you know there's a shortcut? This one's so long. Because now you've got the two equations, you need to see simultaneous equation again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a shortcut. Let me show you the shortcut. Okay, here's an alternative way. I have shown, I've already drawn and labeled this. Okay? So step one is the same. But step two, ho, I, I straighten. Because you see, uh, the direction of acceleration for balancing weight is down, but the direction of acceleration for passenger car is up, which was why the sign very, very annoying. So what I do is I straighten. Straighten the pulley system. Can my teacher? Can. I straighten so that my balancing weight is here and my passenger car in Bernardo inside is here. Of course, Bernardo is probably going to struggle a bit standing like that, but it's physics. <laughs> okay, so when I straighten the pulley system, okay, what happened now is my acceleration is parallel. La. Where is it accelerating? It's accelerating here. This is eight. I straighten the pulley system. Mm. And when as things are parallel, it's easy to give a common sign. Then you don't get confused. No? Okay. Easy to assign a common sign. But let us label all the forces first. Obviously, we have tension. T, we have tension. T, okay. You know that this one is 600 G in this direction. And this is 600 kg. And the other side here will be 640 G in this direction. And this weight is 640 kg. So now I apply net force is MA but on the whole thing. So I didn't divide and conquer. Ah. I take it for the whole system, for both systems, both the balancing weight and the passenger car. Okay, right now, if I'm teaching you, I will ask you which direction you want it to be positive, but I'm not teaching you, right? I'm pre-recorded, so I get to choose where I want to be positive. I'm going to take this direction as positive because I know if it's accelerating to the left, which means... 640G will be the bigger force. And I don't like negative numbers. Cannot lie. Okay, anyway. Which means once I assign the sign, this will be positive, pointing to the left. This is negative, pointing to the right. This is positive, pointing to the left. And this is negative, pointing to the right. You're right. So just put it together, right? Yeah, put it, put it together. All of it. Just bring together. Like 640G minus T plus T minus 600 g all the forces we put together this one this one this one this one all the arrows you have drawn we gather them 
Mm, very nice. I'm so satisfied. Okay, teacher, what about the M? Uh? Both systems, right? They move together. So you should have the same 640 plus 600. Hmm. Hmm. Teacher, the T can cancel, huh? of course. That's the whole point of doing this. And once you straighten the pudi, that, that sign con confusion part kind of like feels better in the brain, right? At least for me. Lah. All right. So now I have here 40G is equal to 1240A. Teacher, teacher, it's the same. It's the same as what? Lah? It's the same as your first method here. Correct. Correct. So I bypass forming two equations and then simultaneous equation by simultaneous equation, the diagram first. Okay, okay. So from here, I can substitute values and I will get 0 0.316 all over again. Okay, so this 40G is 40 times 9.81. So this is the second method. Okay, it's the same method. I just use this shortcut, straighten the pulley. All right, and now with A, if you want to find T, you can... You, you need to know both methods. You know why? Because sometimes they will ask you to find tension in the string. So in order to find T, you will take this value of A and you need to form either this second equation or this first equation, put the value of A inside to determine T. So both techniques you need to know. But this is a shortcut. All right, that's it for this example.